Hi, my name is Mary. Can we meet you, please? Um, yeah, my name is Lance. Um, I'm currently a student at the University of Cape Town. I'm originally from Port Elizabeth, um, and I've been in Cape Town for the past six years. Um, I've done my undergraduate year and my honours degree, and I'm currently doing my Master's in Public Health. I did my undergrad, um, I did a Bachelor of Social Science, where I majored in Psychology, Drama and Forming Media. I went on to do my Honours in Psychology, and now I'm doing my Master's in Public Health, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Okay, alright. Um, what, in your opinion, do you think the government of South Africa should do for the South African child? Um, I think our government in South Africa has really they've dedicated a lot to the children of South Africa, um, especially in terms of contextually looking at things like um, infant mortality um, and HIV and AIDS. And um, specifically, quite a recent issue is the mother and child transmission of HIV and AIDS. I think our government has really tried to address that issue. Um, the government was all, also given and dedicated um, funds which, with child grants, which is proving to be quite a success. Um, I mean, there's contradictory kind of ideas around whether it is a feasible policy to have child grants. Um, and for me, currently, I think that what probably some ideas as to how government can improve such policies is by evaluating if such policies actually work. Um, I also think that, um, yes, the government is, as, as South Africa, I think we have a lot of issues that we come through and structural issues need to be addressed. I don't think the issues speak primarily to the children of South Africa. But I think the issue speaks to the people of South Africa. Because once the people of South Africa improve, our children will have better outcomes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, what is your position regarding human rights in women? Human rights in yeah. women? Yes. Um, I think that women are a particular group that have been historically marginalized in many ways. Okay. Um, and there are different um, kind of ways that our state and and internationally, um, we've tried to address the issue of, of women rights. And okay. um, this is within our country and the world. Um, and kind of shifting power balances um, from historical injustices against women. I think that, yes, we have taken significant strides, but I think there's still a gap as to the extent to which issues of, of women has been um, kind of tackled. Okay. I think the the radical approach within our country is the fact that we have not had a female president yet, which speaks to the kind of leadership and governance and how women is valued within the system. Okay. Um, although we are progressing, um, I still think that there are that we can do with a lot of improvements. Mm -hmm. My position currently is that I advocate for women empowerment. I'm a feminist, so I believe that women should be. We need to challenge the institute of patriarchy and kind of address issues related to the, um, to the historical injustices that, that were targeted um, against women in the past. Okay. I think it's important as a country that we, um, that we kind of navigate our ways in order to, to address such issues and allow women a platform to develop and grow and initiatives need to target kind of the, the empowerment of women. Alright, thank you very much. Um, how can we monitor the progressive realization of economic, social, and cultural rights in our economy? Okay, so sorry, can you explain that again? Can you start again? Okay, how can we monitor the progressive realization of economic, social, and cultural rights in the economy? Mm -hmm. I think coming from a policy kind of um, monitoring and evaluation background. I think that effective kind of policies need to be implemented, but although the policy is implemented depends on how the policy is evaluated. Okay. So monitoring and evaluation is quite a prominent kind of area that is currently emerging and has gained quite prominence because there are a lot of things out there, but how is it monitored, especially with um, kind of the policies that has been addressing a lot of issues in South Africa. Um, economically, I mean, when you think about economic, social, and cultural 
um, issues within our country and monitoring that in itself, um, those, those particular kind of factors or constructs need their own kind of definition, their own ways in which they can monitor. But broadly, I think that um, such issues definitely need to kind of address, kind of be monitored through looking at the specific context that we're in and understanding how historical phenomena um, if I can use an example um, of the, the kind of social or cultural aspects is HIV and AIDS in our country. I think the progression of culture and speaking to race, because all of these things intersect um, within, our story, in, within our particular context, I think that when you look at, um, at the issue of culture and social aspects in relation to race, you can see the issue of HIV and AIDS being a big issue within our country because of the phase that we went through AIDS denialism. Um, I think that just going through the period at which we tried to not kind of become aware that HIV and AIDS was, was a problem because of the social and cultural political context that we are in. Um, if I look at Dabon Baker's presidency um, and his time when he was in office, I think that that was a, the biggest impact that we had on, on, on race, on, on, on kind of HIV and AIDS and the development of, of the, the, epi, the pandemic or epidemic, I'm not so sure what's it called now, but kind of how we look at that and unpacking that from kind of that position. Okay. Economically, I think restructuring and redistribution of wealth is quite a, quite a big issue within public discourse right now. Um, and economic freedom, liberation for black people is quite a big issue. So I think that um, those things can definitely be monitored through those paradigms. Okay. Yeah. All right. um, what role do you think a South African child can have in ensuring that their rules have been the rights rather have been respected. So you ask them about the roles that yeah. children play. Can play to ensure that their rights have been respected. Mm -hmm. I think the the difference or the problem that we have in South Africa, for me at least from an observation, is the fact that we as our education um, this kind of system, I don't think we groom active children. And that's why our youth is also termed as passive or apathetic, which is a word I really hate. But I think that um, our kind of system or the way we ha have raised or the way we raise children coming from a historically disadvantaged background, I think that um, our, the, the ways in which we groom our children to be active citizens lack. Okay. And I think that once we kind of understand children's roles first and what where they play in addressing these rights I think that we need to now address kind of issues of um, what is it that we I think first we need to target as what is it that children face what are the struggles that children have within our country um, and then kind of addressing how we can actively address those um, I don't know how to really elaborate with an example, but I think children play a key role, an active role, and that it's just a matter of the the kind of the learning and the knowledge that we give our children and we grant our children with. And this is a systematic thing, I think it falls down to education and our dynamics um, within our families, within our kind of micro context, as well as the macro context. I think that it's, it's the combination of factors that play a role I think the biggest thing is allowing children to engage um, and kind of grooming them and, and training them and equipping them with the knowledge, the skill to critique, to be active citizens, to interrogate, to understand, to learn, but not depend on others to, to kind of advance in, in knowledge, in practice, in anything really. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you very much for that. Um, what, in your opinion, do you think the government of Western Cape can do differently to improve the rights of women and children in this province? Pertaining to the rights of women and children, I think, I think again, when, when it comes to women and children both, I think um, 
again, the rights of people should be addressed in a way, because I feel like the priority is definitely women, because women are the ones, we have the highest rates of women who are affected by HIV and AIDS, well, right up the highest rates of households run by women, um, and kind of have to sustain um, the households where women are in poverty, women are really struggling, um, having to raise children, having to raise their families. Um, so I think, in terms of the Western Cape, I think social support for women is quite an important thing. Okay. But at the same time, it's a multifaceted issue because as much as the government, so first of all, the Western Cape's policies, in my opinion, okay. is lax in addressing the poverty within the Western Cape. Okay. And when I say, when I make such a statement, I think that um, it still sustains kind of historical privileges and fails to, to address the kind of nuanced issues or the underlying issues that we are grappling with as a country and that is um, how do we start empowering people that weren't previously empowered. If I look at the townships within Cape Town only, I think it's a big problem, a big like disparity between the rich and the poor yeah. and that in itself is the issue. Um, I can't particularly say, I don't think I'm well versed to speak on a direct policy or a direct strategy in order to address that issue. Um, but I do think that the Western Cape, um, there's a limitation to how much they do. And it starts with addressing things like just redistribution of health, of wealth, kind of attacking, t attacking issues um, such as poverty, um, unemployment, um, and formal housing. And those are the issues that also will assist in development of women. And also women in corporate. Black women in corporate. It's very rare in Cape Town that you actually see. And the advancement of black South Africans within, 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 within corporate in the Western Cape is quite, it's quite problematic. Having observed and kind of heard from, from people and the experiences of, of development within Cape Town and the Western Cape. In terms of corporate, in terms of industry. I think, yeah, I think there's a stagnation in how much women actually advance. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Um, what's the definition of happiness? Um, my definition of happiness is, it's just, I don't think, what is your definition of happiness? I mean, it's something that we, it's very subjective and it's, and it's something that you can't even, that you can't explain because when you have it, you know it's there. You know that you're in, in that state. So it's, I don't think it's something that I can particularly define um, because I'm happy in different contexts. But you know when you're happy. It's a feeling. It's, it's something that I don't think can be explained. I think it's when you're in it, you know that that's it. Okay. It's kind of what love is. What's, what's the definition of love? No one can really define it. <laughs> yeah. But it's... Yeah, I think that's what happiness is. Yeah, to me at least. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, what were your dreams as a child while growing up? Yeah, I've always dreamt of becoming a doctor because my mom's a nurse. Okay. So I guess I've been imbued with ideas of wanting to kind of contribute to the health system by becoming a medical profession. Um, and then it's, it completely changed my ideas about kind of what I want to be. I always dreamt about having a platform to talk, to engage, to understand people, to learn. I think in my high school years, that's and that's why I pursued psychology because I was interested in people, okay. in the human, the human aspects, the human nature. I was interested in understanding people and understanding the way they are and how the mind works okay. and how complex individuals, how we can kind of understand this complex, the complexities of being. Um, people within a particular conflict. So that, those are my dreams to engage with kind of those issues and address. Um, it, yeah, I really wanted to. I knew that I wanted to 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 kind of move away from 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 where my, my house, my home, okay. and kind of development because that's I've always knew known that I want to develop, I want to travel, I want to see the world. 
So I always had dreams about that. As a child, I, you know, it's it's important for you to strategize and know that um, there are particular things you have to work to to gain okay. a particular, like what you want, your dreams. And I think when you look at your goals and your visions and stuff like that, it ultimately needs to lead up to what you inevitably want out of life. And I think that forms part of your dreams. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, can you name a person who has had tremendous effect, impact rather on your life, say maybe mm -hmm. a mentor or mm -hmm. someone? I think the most, the person that most significantly um, um, impacted my life is probably my mom. Okay. And I'm saying that because, um, I mean, she is someone who's really hardworking and she's obviously kind of the mentor close to home because she was the one who disciplined me, imparted all my values what I know and I understand myself to be it's from her. Okay. Um, I think also because she was just a hard working woman through doing three jobs at once to sustain my education, kind of um, being inspiration to, to move beyond just doing kind of secondary education, moving to to, to like um, tertiary education, but even higher pursuing postgraduate studies. Um, which is quite a rare, I mean, a rare skill or, or something that's rare for someone my age to be a master as I'm only 23 years old. And I think it's because of my mom. My mom has just really been, you know, supportive about kind of academic and that is her priority that she wanted kind of um, to impart the skills and the knowledge and give me, provide us the opportunity as a children to develop and grow in areas that she never had the opportunity. So I think that she's my biggest role model okay. and, and the person that yeah, that I probably that has impacted my life quite 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 significantly. Yeah. Okay. Alright, thank you very much. Um sorry. What in your opinion should a South African child do in order to have a better chance of survival in the economy as we see? I don't think this burden is on the children. I think children should be protected. I don't think children have any responsibility to play in how they are protected. Um, I think as us, as adults, as people who are, who are, I think it's important for us to take ownership of our children and to protect our children. And um, just the protection of issues when you read the newspaper, it's a rape towards children, all these things. I think that a culture of protecting our children is so important. And I think it's not something that, I mean, we can't expect children to, to kind of protect themselves. We can't expect children to be the ones who are um, talking against, because they can be easily, children can be easily manipulated if children have a particular character sense of learning and growing phase for them. They, they're children. I was a child once. Mm. And there are so many things that could have happened when I was a child and the stuff that I understand now when I was younger is very different. But I think that we should still have a platform where children are told or communicated. And I think children with greater esteem um, probably have greater chances of kind of protection and survival, speaking out against or if you know, if there are, if there are in situations that are kind of, um, that's problematic for them, or unsafe, or, or they have issues, um, I think, yeah, we, we, there are means in order to, to, to kind of address the issue of, of, of violence against children specifically in our country is a big thing, so I think that, yeah, understanding and, and really teaching children how to how to how to be and how to, what to do when they in these situations is quite important and to speak up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But that's as far as I can think a child's responsibility should be in protecting themselves. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, which is more important to you? Is it mission? Is it core value? Or is it service delivery? Um. It's a very difficult um, question because all three are equally important and they're interchangeable and you cannot have a you can have a great service delivery if you don't have a standard plan of mission as to what you want to do so the outcome of your delivery won't be great if your mission isn't foundational um, at a core value aspect I don't think the, the 
core values is kind of what holds it all together. Okay. Um, so I think everything is equally important. I don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily see myself deciding between these three things. Although at the end of the day, what's most important is the outcome of the delivery and kind of seeing results. We want to see deliver. We want to see what people deliver. We want to see change. We want to see transformation. We want to see impact. Okay. We want to see effectiveness. So, yeah. So probably, in essence, probably the final step is probably the most important. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. um, what is the one thing you think a young South African child can take from your life? Someone who is looking out to succeed. You want to go to school. What do you mm -hmm. think they can take from your life? Mm -hmm. I think um, just coming from, I mean, I'm from a colored um, school, a school that was particularly in primary school. Um, I think that you, from at least from my life and reflections, kind of from where I am, I think, um, yeah, it's important for children to 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 realize that. Whatever they set their heart on and kind of their mind on, um, with limited with, to to really seek opportunity, I think the biggest thing that, that I kind of really chased after was opportunity, and I still do it. We have can see opportunity to grow and develop, um, no matter what it is. Um, always seek an opportunity, and no matter where you're from, you can always like achieve a maximum goal to your capacity. Okay. Um, yeah. It's probably some something that that the cycling child can take away. Just okay. to really um, grow, hold on, and look for opportunities, look for networks, and yeah, and grow. Look for ways to expand and grow and develop. Okay. Yeah. So seek. Yeah. Okay. So do you have any last advice for us, or any word you want to say, you want to put out there? Um. No. Fine. I think that yeah. I think that it's important for children to just to just hold on to kind of who they are as children and wait to grow and develop. I know that I always wanted to be an adult, but it's, okay. so it's amazing to just be a child and understand and live, live fully and remarkably in order to to really understand where you want to go and what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us.